Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the best tier 10 US cruiser, the Montana, and I'm using these modules and commander skills. Now this is a match on the map uh, Tears of the Desert with Epicenter mode, which many people absolutely hate because it's terrible. But speaking of terrible maps, I think that they should remove North from ranked because the middle island with the two cap zones just makes it a horrible experience. Anyways, um, well, I am. I spawned on the western, sorry, northern side, and uh, I will be heading towards the middle because Tears of the Desert pretty much is a standoff where both teams stay behind more or less their own islands unless they are destroyers. And uh, well, I saw an enemy Kagero. I fired, but I only did one over pen worth of damage. Next, I suppose the target is going to be the Tirpitz, and uh, well, because both teams are essentially going to be doing a standoff from uh, behind their or near their own, own islands, well, these 17 kilometer fights are pretty much what I'm gonna be getting. I'll head towards the middle and, well, see what the enemy team does. Usually what happens is that the team that is more aggressive tends to lose out. But you know, it's not always the case. However, I am a Montana, so I am not exactly the best ship to go clo close quarters. I think uh, something like a Kurfürst uh, definitely prefers that over my ship and, uh, you know. Maybe even something like a Yamato is slightly better because they are able to overmatch um, other tier 10 battleships from the front. But regardless. I think the Montana is actually a fairly good battleship. I know I called her a cruiser earlier, that that, that was a joke. But um, I do think that she is fairly good, because one of the biggest reasons is because of her firing angles, and I think that if Wargaming wishes to buff the Montana, one of the ways that they could do it in a way that wouldn't really, you know, force them to play with too many numbers would be to... Uh, increase the firing angles of the back guns so that they can, you know, turn slightly more so that the ship has to be less angled to bring all 12 guns to bear. And honestly, the firing angles right now are part of the reason why I think the Montana is actually quite alright. She doesn't really... like, the anti-air power is not really that useful nowadays. Because... Um, it's not really going to completely protect you against the carrier ever, because that would just be ridiculous. But also, there aren't as many carriers around nowadays, so you're not as, uh, you know, reliant on the anti-air. And if there is no carrier, you don't gain anything from your anti-air strength, and your secondaries aren't very good, your, shells don't, your shell caliber isn't very high, so you don't bring the other things that uh, ships like the Kurfürst and the Yamato bring. However, what you do bring is 12 guns with fairly fast turret traverse and good firing angles, which means that you can be more maneuverable. You can uh, change targets more easily, you can uh, weave through islands, although your ship isn't exactly the most maneuverable thing itself, but uh, there are things you can do which the other tier 10 battleships can't. However, at close range in like a straight up fight, um, you will probably be um, in a disadvantageous position against something like a Yamato or, or even a Kurfürst. But you know, it's not... there are still random battles, so it's not the end of the world. And actually in organized battles, you know, your anti-air strength is actually going to matter quite a bit. So. Uh, so far I've just been, you know, trading shots, like I said, at the 17-20 kilometer range. But now I think that I will... I, th I was thinking of taking another shot on the um, Kurfürst, but... Um, then my thoughts were that, oh, I should just switch to the Izumo. However, unfortunately I managed to run myself aground because I was not paying enough attention to where my ship was going. And um, yeah, I think the Izumo would be a very good target at the front. Also, oh, I didn't mention it earlier, but one other thing that um, Wargaming should probably buff about US battleships is their um, deck armor. 
38 millimeters is not enough. Um, particularly now because of IFHE. Especially since uh, Yamato and uh, Kurfürst are like 50 or 70 millimeters. Well, not the whole deck, but you know, a lot of it. So they are much less susceptible to AG damage. Okay, um, this Izumo is coming closer, so I have to pick these awkward diagonal shots. I'll start going forwards, but unfortunately, well, I lost the the angle. Oh yeah, another thing, if uh, Wargaming wants to buff US battleships in general, what they could do is they could make um, the scout plane be... Uh, Maybe instead of one minute, make it two minutes, or, you know, maybe give, give them a full cruiser scout plane. Because, um, honestly, in ranked battles, you actually see just how damn good uh, scout planes are, particularly on this um, dreadful map called North, because those scout planes are pretty much the main way that people know the existence of the enemies. So, Anizuma is a very, very good uh, match for the Montana, although, you know, since I'm showing full broadside right now, this might hurt. Oh, actually, she's firing HE, never mind. Although, to be honest, that was 8000 damage with HE, so that still did hurt. But she is also showing broadside to me, so hopefully I'll get a decent salvo off here. Okay, uh, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, our situation is not very good. We have lost four ships, they have lost two. We've lost two destroyers, but the bigger problem is the fact that we've lost two battleships, while they only have lost a cruiser and a DD. I think some of the battleships were a bit too aggressive on our side. Should get a nice other um, broadside salvo by the Izumo, because, uh, because of where she went, because of those islands. However, I kind of messed this up. I aimed far too much at the front. While I did deal a lot of damage, I was hoping for some citadel heads, which I unfortunately did not get. So I'm falling back right now because I am the only ship on my team on this side, um, while fighting the Izumo is great and all, but um, that Izumo does have backup in the name of, uh, I don't know, two cruisers, one battleship, maybe three cruisers. I'm slightly worried about that Yamato over there because she has her nose pointed in my direction and most likely the guns as well. So those might be coming for me. I take a shot because my guns are turning anyway, so I might as well try. While my back guns are reloading. And then I will take a shot on the Izumo that is running away. Okay, now the question is, at this point, I don't think... There's much reason for me to try to go all that close, because we have lost six ships, they have lost two. And uh, as I mention all the time, it's much easier to defend than attack, especially against destroyers. Or, you know, other ships that have things like torpedoes. But then again, even against battleships and other similar ships, it's still easier to run away or, you know, defend rather than attack. And so I don't think that it would be a good plan for our team to push, you see, objective-wise, it's not the most important thing for us to try to be aggressive, because we do have the middle of the cap zone, and uh, they have to do the push into us, which should give us a slight advantage, but we've lost so many ships, I don't think that um, this slight advantage will be good enough, I think that we will need to do more. And honestly, this is going to be problematic. I'll do a pass over here. By the way, right now you can see my um, concealment expert uh, at work here. The Yamato is at 16 kilometers, but I am not spotted because of my very good concealment range. So I'll be doing a pass around this island here. Hopefully I'll get a shot on the a good shot on the Zao or the Kutuzov to try to, you know, pick one of them off because full broadside against the uh, Showing full broadside against the Montana's full broadside fire is not one of the best ideas. Now I think I might have... Maybe it would have been a good idea to... What? Did you just... What? That was one over penetration and six bounces on the Zal. 
Wow, that armor, that armor is insane. That was, um, you know, I would say very well played by Dizal, but honestly, that's not really well played by Dizal, it's just poorly played by me, although to be honest, Dizal has a very, very troll armor layout. This one though was fairly good, 32,000 damage, but unfortunately sh she still survived at 4,000 HP. And I don't really have another opportunity to shoot her because she will be outside of my range once I... Well, she will be outside of her concealment range once I clear this island, so... My next shot is going to be on the Edinburgh, hopefully I'll be able to finish her. The Edinburgh is even softer, well not even softer, is soft. The Zao really is not a soft cruiser. Okay, well at least I took out the Edinburgh. There's the Zao. Uh, hopefully I'll get one more shot off. Um, the numbers are slightly equalizing. We have five ships. Well, they still have eight. So it's not as good, but... It's better than it used to be. So next shot is on the Zao. But if you notice right now... The game, for some reason, did not lock my guns earlier. Luckily, though, the lock happened before, you know, I actually fired. I don't remember if I manually targeted it. But I have had a few times where the game doesn't lock a target for some reason, and that those are incredibly annoying, especially if you fire at range, because if you don't have a target lock, your shells are just going to miss really, really badly. So next I wanted another shot on the Zao, but it locked the Izuma, however the Zao disappeared anyway into concealment, so I couldn't take that shot anyway. Oh well, um, I suppose maybe I should try taking a shot on the Izuma. It seems like it would be worth it, since I don't think I will have another target anytime soon anyway. I mean, there is a Montana Yamato and Rune pushing through the middle, however, they are angled towards me. Just like the Izuma is, and uh, honestly the Izuma is a softer target. I'm not firing because I wanted... I figured that it might be a good idea to try to fall into concealment and maybe I can take a shot on like the um, Kutuzov or something. Because that Kutuzov is still around. However, now that the Izuma is showing broadside, yeah, I guess it's worth trying to take the shot. Because at this point I, th I figure we kinda need all the damage we can get. And the Izuma turned away, so my Salva didn't do all that much, because it was aimed more towards the flat broadside. And my next target is probably going to be the Kutuzov, or maybe the Montana, depending on which one is showing a better broadside, if at all. Hello Kutuzov, uh, hopefully you will take the Salva nicely. Please just explode, detonate if possible because this is the only salvo I get. And one citadel, but five over penetrations. Damn. If those had been a few penetrations, maybe that would have been a kill. Well, that's one more ship of ours gone. Uh, I don't want to turn right now. I want to keep going in the direction I am. And I want to make sure that the enemy Montana that's gonna come around the island at the front is going to fire her salvo first, and then I start my turn. Or you know, then I do the turn, but it seems the Montana is actually standing still. I suppose then it doesn't exactly matter if I um, angle all that much. I can just run, I suppose. So, a rune is a good target, but firing at a rune is actually quite tricky because, um, you know, she only has one gun at the front and uh, she has quite many layers of armor. Like, that thing has a lot of armor for a cruiser. And unfortunately she really outplayed me here, because she, um, I expected her to keep going at least at a decent speed, but no, she just completely stopped. But yeah, I was really waiting for the Montana to come around the corner. I wanted to take a shot and then start running, but um, the Montana never came. I said that in chat because clearly the enemy team is winning, there is no reason to play this safe. But they are, so, eh. This Kurfürst is coming around the corner. I hope he doesn't really take a shot on me. At least, not when I'm showing broadside. But he seems to be paying attention to something else, so I can take easy shots over here and probably even show broadside. Because he seems to be occupied by our Kurfürst instead. 
So I'll just turn flat broadside, take a few shots more and then head behind the island before she can uh, make shots in return. Although to be honest, these, sh these shells seem to deal quite a lot of damage to this Kurfürst. Then again, I'm getting quite many penetrations. Okay, so I suppose the next target is the Yamato and um, whatever else comes with the Yamato once I round that island. Maybe I can take out this Kurfürst. She only has 30,000 HP. Okay, this is going to hurt. Those shells are on me and I am showing broadside. Oh my god, only one over penetration. Mr. Fast Eagle over there got really, really unlucky. He only has 5,000 HP, so I think that guy is dead. Goodbye. So, next target is going to be the Kutuzov, I suppose, and uh, that only means that means only my front guns. I don't want to go full speed here because I know there is a Yamato around the corner, and uh, you know Yamatos really like eating up uh, delicious Montanas at close range. And uh, yeah, I just bounced my only shell that hit. Oh, that's so unlucky. Oh yeah, somebody said that this will be unlikely to be a video. Well, I guess, I, I suppose I was wrong, just as he was. Okay, come on, come on, come on, overmatch, delete the Kutuzov, please. Really? 600 HP, damn. Uh, this is bad, I select for secondaries, hopefully my secondaries will be able to take her out, and I think the next target is going to be the Yamato. But... I, I know what happens in this game and uh, I'll be honest here. Actually, I'm going to shoot the Yamato behind. I hope my secondaries will take care of the Kutuzov. But that was a mistake, because the game ends right now. Once I did the damage on the Yamato, if I had shot the Kutuzov, the game would have lasted like another 20 seconds. We probably still wouldn't have won, however, you know, I might have got one more salvo off. Anyways, whatever happened, happened. That's just something I know in hindsight. So I got Fireproof, um, Confederate, Dreadnought, High Caliber, 570,000 credits, 234,000 damage, 4 Citadel hits, 98 shell hits, only one ship destroyed though, and 1570 base experience, with the number one experience in this whole game being 1658. Which means that uh, if my, my team had won, I would have got over... Well, almost 50% more than the enemy's best. However, you know, if you look at the fact that our number two was a Chapayev at 1000 experience, I feel like my team kind of let me down. Oh well, 234,000 damage, like I said, only 594 secondary damage, 2.6 million potential damage taken, and I did take 163,000 damage, and I did not actually sink. That's... this is over 60% more than my HP. Credits and XP, you'll see I made a profit of 271,000 credits. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then like it. If not, then dislike it. And I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Gonzo86. And I hope I see you guys next time.